everyone and welcome to Skein Spider. Today we are making another What the Hook pattern. This month's prompts were a book, a candle and a puppy dog and using those prompts I came up with this thing over here. Now technically I cheated on the dog pattern a little bit because this pattern is actually a pattern from my Halloween set last year. It's a zombie puppy. And the reason I chose to use this is because I want to use both the books and the candle to make a foundation for other Halloween patterns that I'm making. So I've got a Halloween series this year as well. The first pattern is going to be out next week. So if you would like to make a zombie pattern as part of the set, I will link that pattern in the description below. But if you would like to just make the foundation, that's what we're going to be doing today. So grab your hooks and let's get started. To make this pattern, you're going to need both a 3.5 and a 4.5 millimeter hook. You're also going to need scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins and stuffing, as well as yarn in both eight ply and 10 ply. This pattern also has a couple of optional materials. Those include two LED candle lights, some cardboard, some sticky tape, and you may also need something to block with. So you're going to need a bowl of water as well as either a blocking board or an old towel or a bit of foam that you can use to do that with. We're going to start off today by making the books and we're actually going to make two. We're going to make one in a larger size and one in a smaller size. We're going to use the same pattern for each. However, for one, which is the one I'm going to be making now, I'm going to be using eight ply yarn and my 3.5 millimeter hook. And for the second one that I'm going to be making, I'm going to again use the same pattern, but I'm going to be using 10 ply yarn and a 4.5 millimeter hook. So I've got a slightly bigger size. So we're going to begin both of those by creating a slip knot. Didn't do that very well. Okay. And then chaining 26. Once you've chained 26, we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and then we're going to do 25 single crochet back down along the chain. After row one, rows two all the way through to 35 are going to be the same pattern. We're going to chain one at the end of the row, turn our work and then do 25 single crochet across. And again, we're just going to be repeating that for rows two all the way up to row 35. And that's row 35 all finished. What we're going to do now is single crochet around the edge in a U shape. So we're going to go down the left side here, across the bottom and then back up the right side, but also have two stitch markers handy because what we're going to do later on is crochet the spine of the book directly onto this piece. So we're going to mark out where we're going to start and where we're going to end that. So to begin, all we're going to do is single crochet 35 along this edge. We have 35 rows, so that's just going to be one single crochet in at the, in, at the end of each row. So we're going from this point where we finished row 35, straight into the end of the row here. And that's going to be the first single crochet down the side. And this is where I want you to put your first stitch marker. So that's stitch number one. You're just going to continue single crocheting down the edge until you reach stitch 35 at the end. And 35, and then in the 35th stitch, that's where we're going to put our second stitch marker. And then all we're going to do is single crochet across the bottom. So that should be 25 stitches all up and then back up the other side. So another 35 up this side here. I'm also at the bottom here going to be working over this tail end from my slip knot to hide it. But if you prefer, you can just weave that in later on. When you're finished, we're just going to slip stitch into the first stitch at the top here. And then we're going to cut a short tail, 
just long enough that we can weave that in to hide it later on. And then you're going to crochet a second piece in this size, like so. However, the only difference is with this one, so that should be like that. With this one, you're going to single crochet around the left side first, but you're not going to add the stitch markers in the same place. So you're not going to add them in stitch one or stitch 35. You're instead going to single crochet the left side, single crochet along the bottom, but then add the stitch markers in stitch one and stitch 35 on the right side. So you go down the left side, across the bottom, and then as you're single crocheting up the right side, you're going to put a stitch marker in stitch number one, and then stitch 35, so they're on the opposite side. When you've done those two, you can then do a book in a different size. So for example, I'm doing the 10 ply yarn and with my 4.5 millimeter hook, um, again using the same pattern. And then when that's done, I'm going to set my second piece aside and I'm going to grab the first piece I did. So the one I just crocheted then, the one where you put the stitch markers in the left hand side. I'm going to grab the yarn I used for the book covers, so the same brown. And then we're going to join the yarn to the side here. So I'm going to start at stitch number one and I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop. You're then going to take your yarn and line it up behind the back loop where you've inserted your hook, yarn over and pull it through, and then we're just going to slip stitch to join it. And this slip stitch isn't counting as a stitch in our round, so we're going to go back into that same back loop and then just do one single crochet. And then working in the back loops only, we're going to single crochet 35 all the way along. So until we reach the second stitch marker that we placed in stitch number 35 of our single crocheted edge. Once you finish that, we're going to go on to row two, which is going to be chain one and turn your work and then 35 single crochet again. Now, when it comes to the spine, which we're crocheting now, you can make that as thick as you like. So I'm going to be doing rows one through to five as chain one, turn your work and 35 single crochet. But if you'd like your book to be a little bit thicker, you can do seven rows, you can do 10 rows, entirely up to you. Just keep in mind though, that when we get to doing the pages later on, you will have to do the same number of rows for that that you do with your spine here. So write it down if you need to, but I'm just going to be doing rows one through to five are 35 single crochet. When you finish your last row, so for me that was row five, but it may be a different number for you if you chose to make it larger or even smaller. We're just going to chain one and turn again. And now we're going to join the two pieces together. So I'm going to bring in the second piece. And then what I'm going to do is take out my first stitch marker here. And I'm going to go into this stitch first. So I'm going under the front and back loops but then I'm going to go into the piece that's on my hook. However, this time I'm, a, I'm only going into the front loop. So I'm just going to go into the front loop here. And then I'm going to slip stitch the two pieces together. So yarn over, pull through the front loop of the first cover, pull through the back and front loops of the second cover, and just slip stitch. And we're going to continue that all the way along. So I'm going into the front and back loop of this cover, the front loop only of this cover, and then I'm slip stitching. Now, if you don't want to slip stitch your piece together, what you can do is when you reach the end of your final row, instead of chaining and turning, instead cut a long tail, and then you can just sew the two pieces together. But I just find it a bit easier to continue crocheting instead. And we're just going to do this all the way along until we reach the end. All right, and then when that's done, we're just going to cut another tail. And at this point, we're going to start weaving in all our ends. Now, any of the ends that we've already worked over, so this one here, we can just snip those off. 
and the rest of the ends I'm just going to weave in through the backs of my stitches to hide them. When you've finished weaving in all the ends, what you then can do is add some decorative features to your book. So you can add something to the front cover, the back cover, or the spine. All I'm going to be doing for this piece is just adding a couple of stripes on the spine. So I'm just going to join it at the bend here, so where we worked into the front loops. I think we worked into the front loops. I'm just going to join my yarn with a slip stitch. And then all I'm going to do is slip stitch a stripe right across the five rows that I did. Cut a short tail, because I'm going to weave those in too. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to do another stripe just underneath this one, and then I'm going to do one down the bottom. But you can get as detailed with this as you like. And then just weave in these ends as well. When you have finished decorating your book cover, we're then going to go on to block it. When it comes time to block, you can use a blocking board if you have one, but if you're like me and don't, you can go with the cheap DIY alternative, which for me is some old towels that I keep for crafty purposes. So that's one and I'll use two. If you have a bit of foam, you can put that under the towel. It does give the pin something to grab onto, but the piece of foam I've got doesn't quite fit <laughs> under this book. So I'm just going to use two old towels stacked on top of each other. What you're also going to need is some pins. I just have a collection of old pins I use for blocking, so in case they rust, I don't want my good pins to rust. And also just a bowl of water. So what we're going to do is lay everything out. And then you're going to take your bowl of water. I probably should have got a bigger bowl, but we'll see how we go. And then we're just going to dunk our book cover into the water and let that soak up. When that's all covered, we're just going to take our book cover out and then gently squeeze the water out. You don't want to really wring your cover because you don't want to just you don't want to distort your stitches, so just gently squeeze it. There we go, and then I'm going to set that aside. And then we're going to lay our book cover out. And all we want to do here is keep the book cover nice and flat and the edges nice and straight. So this is where you're going to need your pins. And we're just going to go around the edges and pin them down. And you want to just tug gently so it's nice and straight. So you can see this side here is just slightly higher than these stitches here. So I'm just going to tug that so they're in line and then pin it down. Now, if you want to be really meticulous about this, you can get a tape measure and measure your bottom edge, your top edge, and make sure that they're the same length, the same on the side. So you can make sure this side and this side are the same length but I'm just going to eyeball mine because I don't think it matters too much in this pattern. And then when everything's pinned in place, you can make any adjustments that you need to. And then when that's done, we're going to set this aside and let it dry like this for about 24 hours. And while we do that, we're going to be crocheting the other pieces. While our cover is blocking, we're going to start making the candles. Now, there's a couple of ways you can approach this, but I'll go over that in a bit more detail later. What I'm using inside my candles is one of these little LED candle lights, which I don't know if you can actually see it on at the moment. Oh, well. 
but I'm going to be increasing out so my candle base is slightly larger than this candle. So the diameter of that, if I just grab my measuring tape, is almost four centimeters. So maybe just over three and a half. So what you'll need to do if your candle is a different size, so if it's smaller or larger, you may need to change up the number of creases out that you do. But again, we'll do that in more detail when we get to that point. So we're just going to start off, put these aside, with our white yarn or whatever color you want to do your candles in and our 3.5 millimeter hook. And we're going to start round one with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet followed by one increase repeated six times. Round four begins with one single crochet. And then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And two. And then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times. And then when you've done that fifth increase, you should have one stitch left in your round and we're just going to put a single crochet into that. Round five is going to be three single crochet and one increase repeated six times. Round five is going to be my final increase round because if you plan to use a candle like I am, just make sure that when you press it down on your work that you're going to have enough room to fit your candle inside when we crochet the sides. So if you're not using a candle, you obviously don't have to worry about that. But if you are, just make sure it's the correct size. If your candle is larger than your work, you're going to continue increasing until you get about one round. Oops get in the middle there we go so until you have one round free on the outside of your candle so like this you get about one round out when you get to that point we're then going to work as the next round in the back loop so for me that's going to be round six at the end of round five I had 30 stitches in my round so round six is just going to be 30 single crochet in the back loop only When you finish that round in the back loop, which again for me was round six, we're then just going to continue crocheting in the round until we reach the desired height for our candle. So for this one over here, which is going to be my large candle, I, crochet, I crocheted rounds seven all the way through to 20 to get this height. But for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm only going to do from rounds seven through to 13. However, you can do as many or as few rounds as you like. It just depends on what size you'd like your candles to be. When you finished your final round, so whatever number that may be for you, we're just going to slip stitch to finish off. However, how you proceed from here depends on how you want to attach your candle and if you're using one of the LED lights or not. So what I've done with my big one is I crocheted this as the bottom, so that would be this part here, and then I crocheted the top separately so I could insert the candle inside. However, if you're not using a candle, this can actually be the top of your piece. So you can set your candle down like that and have the flame on the top here. You don't have to worry about having a bottom piece. So what you're going to do at that point is cut a long tail so you can sew your candle onto the book if you want to. But if you're like me and you're going to make a separate top piece, you're going to just cut a short tail and then grab your needle 
and we're just going to weave this tail end in through the backs of our stitches so on the inside here To make the top piece for your candle, we're just going to follow the same pattern that we did for the bottom increase rounds. So for me, I'm going to be using rounds one through to five. But if you're using a larger LED candle and you had to increase out further, you're going to follow that pattern. So I'm going to start with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is going to be six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round four is one single crochet, one increase, then two single crochet, one increase repeated five times, and finish off the round with one single crochet. And then round five is going to be my final round, which is three single crochet, one increase repeated six times. So it's just the exact same pattern we used to increase out when we did the base of the candle. When you've finished your last increase round, we're just going to finish off with a slip stitch and this time we're going to leave a longer tail for sewing. And then we're going to take this tail end and thread it through our needles. And we're going to sew this top piece to the base of our candle. Now we're not going to sew the entire thing on. So as you can see here, I've left a little space so I can put the LED light in. But the number of stitches you need to sew together is going to depend on the size of your candle and how many stitches you have in the round. So for me, I did 20, so which is two thirds of the way around. But for you, you may want to do 15, you may want to do more. It's entirely dependent on how big your candle is and how much room you actually need to get it into the candle base here. And then when you're finished, we're just going to weave this end in through the backs of our stitches too. So you want it on the inside so it's hidden. We're going to finish off the candle by crocheting the flame and we're going to start that with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is two single crochet and one increase repeated twice. Round three is eight single crochet. Round four is one increase followed by seven single crochet. Round five is worked in the front loop only and we're going to do two single crochet, one increase and repeat that three times. Both round six and seven are each 12 single crochet. After round seven, we're just going to stop for a moment and add just a little bit of stuffing. And then when that's done, we're just going to continue on with our eighth and final round, which is just going to be six decreases. And when you're done, you're just going to need to leave a tail for sewing. When the flames crocheted, we're just going to sew that directly onto the top of our candle. So if you didn't create the top piece, you're just going to sew it on here. But if you did do the top piece and you sewed it on, we're just going to sew it directly onto round one here. So there's six, whoops, six stitches in our final round here, six stitches in the first round here. So we're just going to match that up. And 
And then we're just going to finish off by weaving the tail end back up through the flame to hide it. When your book is nice and dry, we're just going to take the pins out and take it off the towel or the blocking board if that's what you're using. After that, we're going to begin crocheting the pages of the book and we're going to do this directly onto the book cover itself. So we're going to start on the back cover, which is this one, and we're going to start at the top. So for me, the top is where those two stripes are and we're going to start here. However, if you do it this way, you are going to end up with, I'll bring in the first book I made, the bigger one. You are going to end up with a line of page colored stitches all the way around the back. Now for me, this isn't an issue because I plan to put this big book down on a base. I don't know if I'm going to crochet one or just use a wooden base yet, I'm not sure. But I'm going to put that down on the base so you won't see it. And then I'm going to attach this second book to the top of the first. So again, you're not going to see that, that row of stitches behind the book. If you don't plan to stick these books down to something so you can hide the stitches, there are a couple of things you can do. Number one is you can crochet the first row of the pages that we're going to do in the book cover color. So for me, that would be brown. And that will still give you a row of stitches, but they'll be in the same color as the book cover, as the book cover so they will be a bit hidden. The second thing you can do is actually count the number of stitches that you're going to make so you're going to count how many stitches you do across the bottom how many stitches you'll do across the top and then down the sides and you can crochet in rows one long piece and then sew that long piece to both the back and the front covers just using the backs of the stitches to sew so you won't see it from the front that's another option but for me because i'm hiding it i'm just going to crochet directly onto my cover here so what i'm going to do is start one row in from the top so i'm going to start here that's one row free i'm going to be single crocheting all the way out until i get to my second last stitch so i'll be leaving one stitch free down the side and then again i'm going to single crochet down until i reach the second last row at the end here so i'll have one row free at the bottom as well so i'm going to have one row free here so one row free or one column free here and one row free here. So you can do this, you can go in further if you'd like, or you can do it directly onto the edge of the book. It's up to you how you'd like your book to look. So all we're going to do is when you've figured out where you want to start crocheting, insert your hook into that stitch. And we're starting from the spine. So the spine is here and this is the back cover. You're going to bring in whichever color yarn you're using for your pages, line it up behind your hook, and then you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through, slip stitch to join. To begin, we're just going to go back into that same stitch and do one single crochet. And like I just explained before, I'm just going to be single crocheting across these stitches until I reach the second last stitch here. So I'm going to leave this row free. I'm also going to be working over this end so I can hide it. So I'm going to go into, see where I'm going, into the next stitch, work over the end, single crochet, and again, next stitch across, single crochet, there we go, and just continue single crocheting until you get to whichever stopping point that you want to use. When you've reached the point at which you want to stop along the top, we're going to just rotate our work and then continue crocheting in a straight line down the side of the book here. When you've reached the stopping point at the side here, we're just going to do the same thing. Rotate your work and we're going to work back along the bottom row here. When you've crocheted all three sides, what we're then going to do is chain one, turn our work, and then work back in the opposite direction. So we're going to go along the bottom, up the side, and across the top again. 
What we need to do at this point is match the number of rows of the pages to the number of rows that we did in the spine. So in the spine, I did rows one through to five. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I've done row one, I'm going to do row two, I'm going to chain, I'm going to chain one and turn my work and go back again. And I'm going to keep doing that until I've gotten to row number five. So we're going to start row two. And then we're just going to continue working until we've done five rows in total. When you've finished your final row, you're going to need to leave a really long tail for sewing because we're going to be sewing on the pages that we've just created, but also the sides here, these little pieces here. So you need a fairly long tail to do that. Oh, that might be a bit too long, but <laughs> we'll work with it. Before we begin sewing the two sides together, there's one extra step that you can take, and that is to cut some cardboard to give the piece a bit of structure. So that's what I've done in the bigger book here. So it just helps to keep it nice and square. So what you'll need to do is cut two pieces of, two larger pieces of cardboard. One is going to be for the back cover, one is going to be for the front cover. And then you're going to cut a, another two pieces that are the same length, but they're going to be narrower because we're going to place one in the spine and then one in front of the pages here. So you're going to place those down and then I'm going to just use some sticky tape, which I've got over here, to keep them together. Okay, that's done and it is incredibly messy and ugly, but that's all right because it's only going on the inside of the piece. So then what you're going to do is bring the top over and you're going to take this very long end that we've left and thread it through your needle. And the first thing we're actually going to do is sew the end here so along here to the spine. Now, when we're sewing this piece, so we don't see the cream yarn through at the front of the book, we are actually going to work into the back of our stitches. If I start here, I'm going to line up this end bit with the end of the spine, and I'm going to go through the backs of the stitches. So if I turn my piece over, you can't see the needle at the front. So when I pull the yarn through, it is going to take 10 minutes for how long it is. See, you can't see it at the front. So we're just going to continue along here and sew on this end bit. So I'm going to go up through the pages. And then into the back of the stitches. And once again, you can't see the needle from the front. Once you've sewn on the last stitch, you're then going to push your needle through the inside of the piece, so in here. And just pull the tail through. And then you're going to close the cover and using the same method of going through the backs of the stitches, you're going to sew the pages of the bottom to the bottom of the front cover, so along here and you want to sew it in the same spot that you crocheted the row here, so they are symmetrical. So I'm going to go up through the first stitch, and then through the back of my stitch here, And you're just going to continue that all the way along. So I'm going into the stitch of the pages and then through the backs of my stitches in the front cover. 
and I'm going to be sewing across the bottom and then about halfway to three quarters up the side before I put in my cardboard insert because that's just a bit of a pain to work around so you can sew most of the way on insert that cardboard insert and then we can add some stuffing if we want to just to give the book a little bit of weight so continue sewing Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop and add my cardboard in. And then when you're done, we're going to continue sewing up the side and then across most of the top. And when I get to that point, I'm going to stop and add some stuffing. At this point, I'm just going to stop and add stuffing. You don't have to add stuffing because we do have the cardboard insert. However, I like it because it does give the book a little bit of weight, so it keeps it still. When you're finished adding the stuffing, we're going to finish off sewing the top, and then we're also going to sew across the spine here as well. When you finish sewing the pages to the spine, we're just going to weave this end in. The last thing that we need to do is assemble our piece. Now I did intend to glue my pieces together but now that I've thought about it a little bit, what I'm going to do instead is attach some Velcro to the bottom of this book and to the bottom of each of my candles because that way what I can do is I can rearrange the pieces. So if I have my piece set up like this, for example, but then <laughs> you probably can't see that very well, like so. But then at a later time, if I want to change it up a little bit, I'll be able to do that, but it'll still stay in place because of the Velcro. Now, I don't have my Velcro on hand, so I'm not going to do that in this tutorial, but that is what I'm going to do to put my pieces together. However, what you can do is you can glue them down if you have a hot glue gun or some super glue, or if you want to, you can sew your pieces together, but that's just a more permanent solution that I don't want to go with. So I will be attaching Velcro but you can do whatever you think is best for your foundation piece. And with that, this isn't going to work. <laughs> and with that, we are finished. So I will see you next week, which is going to be the start of my Halloween series where we're going to be making several Halloween characters. So I hope you guys will enjoy that.